believe it, Alma. We're here. We're really in France. Because I don't suppose it's that exciting to you because you've been here so many times. Oh, it's always exciting. I can't tell you how much it means to me you're asking me to share this vacation with you. I'm so glad you could come, Helen. You must be anxious to get to Montan to meet your friends. Yes, I am. And you have actually been meeting them each year for the past 18 years? It's astonishing. <laughs> the Debecs are astonishing people. I'm going to be intimidated, you know. A fifth grade teacher meeting a count. You mustn't be there, quite unassuming. Oh, they have their little foibles, but I think it's more age than background. What, for example? Oh, uh, well, the gifts I bring them. It's a sort of ritual that they've come to expect. Kind of royal tribute? In a way. It's been going on so many years, it's taken on a pattern. They never meet me. When I arrive at the hotel, I go to my room, and there's a knock at the door, and when I open it, Madame de Beck kisses me on the cheek. But the Count refuses to until, as he says, the gifts are bestowed. Oh. <laughs> that happens later in the dining room. Uh, they're just trinkets, really, but they make so much of them. Then, while we're still at the door, the Count hands me a small bouquet, and the first act is ended. Oh, how charming. I do hope they'll like me. What a lovely hotel, Alma. I was so impressed with you when we checked in. With me? Why? Well, how I envy your French, for one thing. I'll make everybody miserable trying to understand me. Oh, it'll come back to you. Well, we'd better dress for dinner, Helen. Your room is over there. Oh, Alma, it's just perfect. You can almost see the beach from here. You better get dressed. Yes, I will. Oh, dear. What is it? Oh, my dress. It's so crushed. Oh, there's a valet in the hotel. He might be able to press it at once. And the phone's in there. How lovely you look. Ah, now let me see. It's, um, it's tailleur, isn't it? Valet. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Just a moment. Come. Back. Oh, oh, madame, how nice. My dear Alma, a full year you will permit yourself to be king. Oh. <laughs> oh, but not by me, not until after the ceremony, mademoiselle. Downstairs, after dinner, after liqueur, after the bistole, then I shall kiss you. <laughs> how I will resist so long, I do not know. <laughs> Meantime, all of France embraces you, and I am free. Finishly jealous. Oh, <laughs> give her the flowers, Philippe, and try to be less gallant. Oh, thank you. Oh, the same lovely mountain flowers every year. Oh, they're beautiful. Alma, the valet is... Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, madame, Count de Beck, my traveling companion, Helen Marston. I am honored, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you. Surely this delightful girl will join us for dinner, Alma? Well, I, I would be pleased, uh, Count, Madame. Thank you. Then we shall see you on the terrace, Doctor. Yes, at once. Uh, tout à l'heure, Mademoiselle. Oh, aren't they delightful? Yes. Alma, did I misunderstand? I thought she called you Doctor. Oh, yes, I should have explained that, Helen. You see, some time ago, they drew the impression that I was, well, that my teaching was in a university. It, it seemed to please them to think of me as an educator. Well, we must go down to them. Will you come as soon as you're ready? Oh, of course. It's really, Francis, and I am really here. How many times have I dreamed about this? Oh, um, um, uh, entrez. Monsieur le valet. Uh, oh, yes. Um, um, 
Jean, Jean Merai, que uh, se trouve. I, oh, dear. I'm you wish it for us, mademoiselle? Oh, you speak English. I hope you will not think me rude. Many guests prefer to speak in French. I was off to rather a poor start, wasn't I? Mademoiselle must not hesitate. The most fluent French is spoken without conscience. You are very gracious. When would Mademoiselle like the dress returned? Well, could I possibly have it at once? I shall attend myself. That's very kind of you. You have not often such pleasant guests, Mademoiselle. Why, thank you. My name is Henri, if I may be of future service. Thank you, Henri. <laughs> Flings, oh, Alma, they are magnificent. Oh, look, Polly, a diamond, ah. you see? Oh, such a small one comes to bear. In perfect taste, as always, dear Alma. A larger would be maladroit. Your present was bigger, Madame de Beck. I, I couldn't bring it down, so... Will you come to my room after dinner? I shall be delighted, Alma, if I do not extinguish in curiosity. <laughs> I am terribly sorry to be so delayed. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. No, my dear... Sit down. Oh, allow me, please. One should always be made to wait for such gratifying results. Oh, thank you. Um, Alma tells me that you were a close friend of Romain Roland, Count de Beck. Oh, yes, yes. A true genius. Those great biographies of Beethoven, Tolstoy, Michelangelo. And Jean Christophe. Ah. Oh, how I would love to have known him. And I believe, mademoiselle, he was part of an era in France which we shall never know again. I have the memory from childhood of Monsieur Zola sitting on the terrace there. Emil Zola? A great man, but something of a boor. I would not have cared for him. All his life, Philippe has pursued the elegant. Disregard him, my dear. Oh, no, it really would be like disregarding a great painting. An original. Ah, bravo, mademoiselle. Do not let my wife come between us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Alma, you can see the lights of Montan from the terrace here. Oh, lovely, isn't it? But I haven't time to stay. Madame de Beck is coming to the suite for her gift. Well, I think I'll stay, if you don't mind. And, Alma, I can't tell you how much it means to me meeting your friends. Oh, they were delighted with you, and so was I. Oh, thank you. I want to be an asset if I can. I... I know what they mean to you. If I thought you were going to disgrace me, I would never have suggested this summer, now would I? Oh, I'll see you later. Who's one, mademoiselle? Oh, 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 is that you, I? May I express the wish that you enjoyed your first day in Montau? Oh, I have. It's been beautiful. It is good to stand here in the moonlight, though it is not permitted to the star. Oh. I am a valet, not a guest. Uh, you are from Wisconsin, I believe? Yes. Uh, do, I, uh, do I pronounce correctly the word? Your English is flawless, Henri. Your kind. It is from my wife. She was English. What? Yes, mademoiselle. She was taken from me five years ago. It was at first a terrible loneliness, but one cannot grieve forever. Perhaps it's better to grieve for something you've had than never to have had anything. Yes. That is lonely, too. Oh, oh bonsoir, mademoiselle. Oh, Count de Beck and madame. Uh, um, mm, may I? Uh, uh, one's wardrobe. A bore. <laughs> Always depressing. This is sewing. Oh, no, it isn't that. I, m m may I present? Uh, no, no, we have no time. We were on our way to Alma's suite, mademoiselle. We shall not interrupt you, dear. Come, Pauline. It is not for the valet to be seen with you, mademoiselle. Oh, but that is ridiculous. Tell me more about your countryside. Well, there is saint jean Capara, where the moon is always... Mademoiselle? Yes? Forgive me. You have seen so little of the country. I have a small car. You would not be offended if I asked. But that's very kind of you, Henri. I would love it. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Helen. Did you have a nice walk? Oh, yes, it's a beautiful night. Madame de Beck said you were talking to the valet on the terrace. Yes, Henri. As an American, 
It may be hard to understand, but that sort of thing, it isn't done here. They were a little shocked. But he's a very fine person. I have no doubt of that. But the Count is especially sensitive. So I must ask you not to let them see you speak to that tailor again. Do you mean that I am not to speak to him? No, I didn't say that. You see, the Debecks are different. They don't understand our ability to associate with the, well, the lower classes. The lower? Alma. Yes? Ah, oh, nothing. What a beautiful view. It was so thoughtful of you to ask me here. It is good to share such things. If you do not mind the presser as a friend. Oh, please. I would much like to call you a friend. Well, I hope you will. Mademoiselle. As a friend, I think you ought to call me Helen. Oh, Helen. <laughs> You are so beautiful. I, 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 I must go back to the hotel, please. How often did you... No, no, I... I, I, I say just... you will see me again. Uh, please, Henri, I must think. Do please. Oh, please, say you will. I, I don't know. Just, just take me back, please. Oh, there you are. You've been gone all day. I thought you were having tea with Madame de Beck. Yes, but for some reason our appointment was cancelled. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You've seen him again, haven't you? Yes. They must have seen you leave with him. <sighs> How unsettling. What? It is so ironic that such a disturbing moment to me should result in a cancelled tea. Are you that interested in the man? Oh, no, no, surely not. I'm too old for that. Then you will do as I ask, won't you, Helen? Of course, Alma. I think it's wise. Yes, yes, I won't embarrass you before your friends. <sighs> I knew we could resolve this pleasantly. <laughs> Oh, oh, you must excuse me, Henri. I can't talk now. You will understand. I wish only to give apology. I do not know how I could so forget my place. In future, I will remember who I... No, no, no. Wait. Wait, please. You must listen to me. I must tell you that being a valet has nothing to do with it. I... I have been asked not to see you. By the Debecks. Oh, please don't ask me any more. I... Then you were not offended when no, I... No, I was not offended. So it is but... the displeasure of these celebrated guests. I should have known. Oh, For years I have seen them together, just so. But they will not touch this, Helen. You must let me go. Why? Do you not see what is given to us? I'm not sure about anything. I, I, I don't know. I will tell you. We have found each other, Helen. You and I. Helen... Helen, what is it? Oh, I, I, I was, I was just... You were perhaps discussing Jean-Christophe, mademoiselle? Please don't be condescending, Count de Beck. Helen, what are you saying to my friend? Yes, it is rather extraordinary behavior. This is no concern of yours, madame. Oh, stop, Henri, please, please, I, I must go. Oh, Helen, Helen. Oh, Count de Beck, I... I, I, I don't know what to say, madame. Mm, it is done. What can one say? But you must understand, I had nothing to do with it. Why do you travel with her? Well, I... But... Come, Philip. You have not finished your liqueur. Oh, come to bed. <laughs> Never have I been so humiliated. 
You've destroyed the dearest thing I know. Oh, Alma, don't you see? I'm in love with him. I don't know how it happened, but I love him. You are in love with this? this? Yes, yes, I am. Could I have lied to you otherwise? I, I, I'm sorry about your friends. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, but... Twenty years of their kindness smashed for this sordid escapade. Oh, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Oh, I must go back to them. I, I must apologize. I, I must beg them to forgive me. I, perhaps in a year they'll forget. Count de Beck. Oh. I wish to speak to Helen. You can come to this room after what you've done to her. It is not Helen's good you wish, but your own selfish need to continue your friendship with these, these faded cartoons of the past. You'll discover how faded when they demand your dismissal. Ah, yes, yes, this they have already done. The management was most amused. It is difficult to take seriously a patron who, who owes so much. What are you... They do not pay bills, mademoiselle. Years now, did the joke of the entire staff. But since they attract a certain number of wealthy snobs, they are permitted to remain. That's a malicious lie. Oh, mademoiselle is not alone in the fraud of little gifts. In the month of August, four ladies from Canada provide the small valuables. All to the pawn shop, mademoiselle. Or trade it to the management for food. This is nothing but slander. I, I, I just won't hear anymore. It is your privilege, but you will not keep me from Helen. In the time of my grandfather, Pauline, the man would have been whipped and the woman put to scorn. It is not without humor, Philippe. Balzac would relish the meeting of a valet and then... Oh, Madame de Bell, Count, you've got to listen to me. My dear Alma, there seems to be nothing to say. But there must be. We're all friends almost 20 years. Does that mean nothing? I am fatigued, Philippe. Will oh, you... Just a moment, Madame de Bell. Yes? Would you tell me what became of the little brooch I gave you last year? You wish it returned? I'd like to know what happened to it. I do not see how it could matter. Is it true you sold it? I must go. No, not yet, please. Count de Beck, where is the cigarette case I gave you? Will you show it to me? I will not. Why? The implication is resented, mademoiselle. You can't show it, can you? And the year before, did you get a good prize for that first edition of Milan? Are you aware of what you are saying, Alma? Quite aware. I'm saying that for nearly 20 years I've been a fool, believing a dream, a lie, a fraud. No wonder I resisted the truth. It's difficult to look into a glass that shows exactly what you are. And I was about to do something to someone that you did to me. I was about to destroy a real faith, a real feeling, a real belief. And I've got to make it up. I'm Alma Wood in 423. There are several things I would like to have pressed. Will you send the valet to my room immediately? You yeah, remember that? I know, Henri, but I do feel I should tell her what we plan. To be married concerns only two, you and me. That is all. You are right, of course. For the future, remember that I am always right. I think you are, Henri. May I have my key, please? But the uh, valet, mademoiselle... No, it's too late. My poor little gesture is lost. I've lost them, too. Everything. Will you send the bellboy? I'll be leaving at once. <laughs> Five has presented 
to Helen with Love, written by Richard McCracken and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Leslie Woods, Ethel Owen, Robert Dryden, Abby Lewis, and George Petrie. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician.